all, good morning. Today I'll be using three colors, a paint trimmer, straight edge, my pencil. I'll be painting on Saunders Waterford 140 pound cold press. I'll be using my angle shader brush and round and probably a liner brush by King Art, the Radiant series. My three colors I'll be using is French Ultramarine, Transparent Red Oxide, and Enviro Friendly Brown Iron Oxide. With those three colors, I'm able to create really cool gray mixes. Everything from warm to cool, from reddish to bluish. I love it. I love these three colors. Now, one word of caution, they are hyper granulating. <laughs> Um, French Ultramarine, when mixed with either the transparent red oxide or the Enviro-friendly brown iron oxide, will mix into different warm and cool grays, but because of that hypergranulation, as you add water and spread it out across the paper and allow it to just leave it, let it be, and let it dry, there are these magical color separations that happen. And sometimes the brown will pull from the blue or the transparent red will pull from the blue. And then when all three colors get on the paper, even more of this crazy granulation and separation happens. So it's just a really exciting mix. I feel like it's a performance mix because while you're painting with it, you're gonna get to see it performing right before your eyes allow the water to move it on the paper and let it be, let it dry. Try not to build up too many layers because if you do too many layers of this, it, every time you add another layer on top, you're kind of fiddling with the way the color separations and granulation is happening. So you want to paint this fresh to give each color mix a chance to lay down on the paper and evaporate and do its thing. The photo I'm painting off of is taken up in Oakland. I love the sky and this lovely snow entry to a ranch. So I'm gonna do a watercolor poured sky, wetting my paper. I leave a couple little areas dry, but I pretty much wet the entire area where the sky will be. And I'm not rushing this because I want the paper to have a minute to open because it's made out of cotton so i want those cotton fibers to open and be ready to receive my pour this is a gray mix i had pre-mixed of the french ultramarine and the brown iron oxide and now i'm going to let it spread out across the paper i found that if you hold your boards on diagonals when you're rocking it to and fro you get the most natural looking shapes here I'm gonna mix a little bit of French ultramarine and the transparent red oxide to get another hue of gray and I'm going to put this in right along the mountain ridge in order to outline that and get that started since the tops of these mountains are snow, <laughs> there's not a whole lot I can do there other than paint the negative behind it, which is the sky. So having this warm gray mixing with the cooler gray on the sky, it should create a nice effect. Remembering also that this is gonna dry a little bit lighter as the water evaporates off the paper. Having a some type of tray. I like to use a cafeteria tray to capture the paint and water that's pouring off your painting is great. But if you're ever, uh, you don't have one handy, you can do what I'm doing here, which is catching. I call it the catch. And that is just catching that excess with a roll of toilet paper or some tissue. Now already, it's hard to see here on camera, but already I'm experiencing some color separations as those pigments duel it out for position on the paper. <laughs> so yeah, it, it, it pulls the, the blue pigments will pull from the red and brown pigments. The trick to a fresh sky is let it be, let it dry. So let's work on the mountain range. 
going to be using a dry brush or rough brush technique, which is where you hold your brush almost level with the paper and drag. Each mix will be a new mix, so there's many shades of gray across this whole painting. I dip my paintbrush and then I will dab the excess paint off the rim and then I'll drag the brush. And that's very important to not have too much pigment on your brush. I also think it's important when you have a three color palette to mix up fresh color each time just to have that variation. And also to just celebrate all the variances of colors you can create with just three colors. <laughs> I can use the tip of the angle portion of my brush to create a little bit of trees, pine along this ridge here to just suggest it. If you're new to the dry brush, rough brush technique of painting, it might throw you a bit because it might look a little bit harder. For instance, we have this soft kind of sky that's blending in and out, <laughs> and then you have these harder, edges that the rough brush creates. But let's remember who the main character of this story is. The main character of the story is not the subdued almost white sky, and it's not the mountains or the ridge line. Those actually are, you know, co-stars <laughs> of this play. The main character to me is this entryway to this ranch the fence line, the telephone pole, the telephone wires, and the outbuilding that's kind of hidden in the tree line. And those are all, to me, the very exciting parts of this painting. So using this dry brush technique is just a way to suggest the mountain range without overdoing it. As it's still wet in the foreground of these mountains, I'm gonna add some color to start suggesting trees. For darker gray mixes, you'll just use more pigment, and for lighter gray mixes, you'll use more water. <laughs> now is your turn to share. I would love to hear your favorite gray mixes and why they are your favorite, or if there is a gray straight out of the tube that you love, if you could put that in the comment section so that other artists can try out the different shades of gray, <laughs> I would really appreciate it. I love when you as the online community get involved with these videos and share tips and techniques and color mixes. I really get a kick out of hearing from you and I'm really appreciative how supportive and encouraging and positive you are. And, and I just, I love waking up in the morning and reading the messages you send me. And just thank you for that. It encourages me to keep posting videos. I painted in my telephone pole and I'm beginning to shape in the building and I'm just thinking square box, <laughs> angled roof window. I'm not trying to draw in a bunch of detail. The building in the photograph is completely obscured. You could just see it barely hinting through the trees, but I want my building to be that main character we talked about earlier. Unfortunately, I was having some issues with my camera battery, so I did not get this whole painting on video but to do my tire tracks I laid in some uh, of a really watered down gray blue gray for the snow area just to get it wet and then I laid in more of a brown gray with the transparent red oxide down where the tire tracks are and then I scraped it with a cut card the scrape technique is so cool <laughs> for doing tire tracks. At the end of this video, if you stay tuned, I will uh, do a quick demo of that just to be able to share that technique because it's a lot of fun and kind of a cheat. Yeah, I feel like <laughs> I feel like I'm cheating when I do it because it literally creates the tire tracks for me. I must give thanks for thanks are due 
Thank you to Tony Couch and Edgar Whitney and Elliot O'Hara. They've been scraping away with knives for decades. <laughs> so having a little pocket knife or a credit card, uh, Cheap Joe's has a cool scraper. So I cut have cut a bunch of plastic pieces in the same shape and I will usually give that out to my students once a year because just it's another fun tool to have in your toolbox. I found that adding while this area behind the building is still wet, I found that adding warmer, um, some of the transparent red oxide and some of the envirofriendly brown iron oxide into this section helped to separate this area from the mountains so that the mountains would be further off in the distance. So increasing your contrast by value and saturation having bolder and darker colors the closer you are to the subject will help to separate them from the mountains and the sky that is off in the distance which fades in saturation and contrast. I'm going to start pulling some of these darks down and connecting my background which are these trees to my foreground. I also like that there is some brown in those tire tracks to echo the brown and red colors that are in the tree stand. Speaking of contrast, oftentimes our focal point becomes the area of highest contrast. So really darkening and adding my darkest dark right around the building will help the eye go up <laughs> the driveway and to the building. This is a fun way to paint snow, is not painting snow, painting under the snow. So on the fence post, there's some snow accumulated. So I'm painting the bottom half of the rail and allowing a little bit of snow line. Let me zoom in. So I'm painting the bottom part and I'm letting it have a little wiggle and a little wobble to suggest the snow and then the very bottom of the piece of wood will be straight. So that part's straight, and then that little wiggle <laughs> will suggest the snow. Later on, when I'm painting, I will add a tiny clays behind the mountains to emphasize the mountains pulling away from the sky. And I'll also put a little bit of a glaze behind the fence post in order to make that snow pop up a little bit more. I love that when you're doing a shadow on the snow, you can literally just pull that color out and into the uh, existing area with a blend with a little bit of water and it just does the shadows so well. I want to strengthen my ruts in the road to balance that value. If I darken one area, I need to look for other opportunities of areas to darken. So I'm trying to add a little bit more contrast on the fence post. Piggybacking here and there, or echoing is a better word, across the paper, balancing and trying to get it to all come together. So the video only recorded about 70% of the painting. And I went in and as you can see, I added just little bits more, some lifting and increase of value and saturation. So I wanted to share a couple of these techniques at the tail end of this video. So first thing I wanna show is how to scrape those tire tracks. Kind of self-explanatory, but still fun to watch. And also how to use tape to do some lifting to enhance some areas if it gets lost in the painting process. But first I wanted to share my class demo from this week. This was that first 70%. And then here is the final <laughs> um, finishing touches. And then a warm up we did. And these are so cool to just loosen up and get a feel for the colors you'll be using, your paper, your water ratio. It really helps you to de-stress and get in that creative mode. So I'm going to add that bonus footage. Thank you for watching this video and please enjoy my mumbling. <laughs> Happy painting, everybody. Open up and then while it's wet, 
you scrape some fire tracks. You could even do some that are like a little messed up. And then you let that dry and it'll look like tire, which is kind of cool. And then the way that I did the, the tape is you just take, you know, your tape and you put it on either side and then you take your toothbrush, get it wet, give it a nice scrub and dab it with your tissue. Um, for instance, this back here is a little bit distracting so I can tape off my telephone pole. And I could, for instance, take a paintbrush and soften that up a little bit to where it's not so distracting. Pull that tape off. Now it's a little bit subdued. I can do the same thing on the other side if I want to. Just soften that up a little bit. Just little little things you can do. A little piece of tape. And tape off. Give that a scrubbing. These are like super little techniques, subtle techniques, right? But they connect to the telephone wire. Kind of cool. You can also use the tape to get like mountains in the background if you. Um, the rough brush portion of your painting didn't turn out perfect. You can take a little piece of tape, pick a spot where you know you might want to emphasize the slope. Take your toothbrush. Blend it out while you're at it. Pull that off and get a little slope there. See that? So these are just really, you know, subtle ways to go in there and get little accents with your tape. Maybe you want the snow to be a little more pronounced on top of your guy. You can just tape that part. And maybe I will just tape a little bit because I don't want to have a bunch of straight lines there. Maybe I can just lift it just enough to where it's a little bit more pronounced. Let's see if you can see it a little bit better. See that? Now that snow is showing just a little bit more. What if you wanted that roof line to be a little more pronounced? <laughs> There's still a piece of tape on here. How funny. Um, I did this the other day. Anyway, I could put a piece of tape there. Put one right here. And give it a lift. Now it's just a little bit more pronounced than before. So yeah, those are little ways to make those finishing touches. I hope you enjoyed this video. And I'll show you. 